Um, I'm Gabby Jamison. I actually just recently transferred to uh, UMass Lowell, and I'll be studying information technology. And when I'm not uh, busy at school, I actually teach kids how to program. And so I want to talk to you today about my first experience using Ember. It all started way back at my very first internship. And my faculty advisor asked me, can you uh, blog about your experience every week? And so I wanted to take it a step further. So instead of just blogging, I decided to build a website to document my entire experience. Because, <laughs> you know, that's the easy way to do it. And so I started trying to build this website. And I didn't actually know where to start. I'd done some tutorials, a little bit of HTML, CSS. I went to Stack Overflow. I started copying and pasting. And I kind of got this thing put together. But it didn't look very good. And it didn't quite work as I wanted it to. And so I felt like there was a lot of missing gaps in my knowledge. And I was having a really hard time uh, trying to get everything together. Because as a beginner, it's hard to know the entire process that you're trying to take. And so I started asking around. I was really frustrated. And I had a friend give me a suggestion. He told me that I should try Ember. It's a framework. And it might make the process a little bit easier. So I decided to try Ember. And it was a little intimidating. There was a lot of information. But I was able to put together a blog that looked pretty nice and ship it by the end of the weekend. And at that moment, I went to school on Monday morning, and I was really proud. And my faculty advisor thought it was pretty cool that I had built this blog and kind of went above and beyond. But he also said something that really stuck with me. He told me that using Ember to build a blog is like using a rocket ship to cross the street. And so maybe that's true. It, it was probably a little bit more than I needed for a website. But it gave me a lot of perspective. And especially for a beginner, the hardest part is just knowing that, that entire journey from start to ship. And it's one thing to write a few lines of code. I think anyone can do that. But it's quite another thing to actually ship a project. And there's so many different possibilities. There's so many different paths you can try to take to do the exact same thing. And what uh, Ember enabled me to do was have a, a guided path so I could find my way and actually finish the project. It solved a lot of problems I had when I initially first started trying to build a website. And that whole idea of convention over configuration really helped me to be able to be a little more creative and get something done. And so there's my website. It's a little screenshot. And starting a project was really beneficial for me. It created this end goal, and I was able to get something shipped. And it was kind of interesting to see that process of going from tutorials, which didn't give me very much context, to actually working with a framework that gave me a way to finish an entire project. And so because that framework helped figure out a lot of the magic behind the scenes so I didn't have to do it, I was able to focus on learning other things, such as error tracking, implementing analytics, and setting up a deployment pipeline. So again, exploring this uh, journey as a beginner was really, it was difficult. It's hard to see that full picture. And before this talk, I actually reached out to quite a few people on Twitter, and I asked them, when you learned Ember, what was the biggest pain point for you? And a lot of them said it was understanding the documentation, or it was that the tutorials seemed out of date, or they were hard to follow. A to-do list only gets you so far. And so I really focused on trying to learn and understand the documentation. And that really helped me along the way. There's this misconception, I think, that Ember has this very steep learning curve. But with the introduction of the Ember core team, I think it's diminished. They've done a really good job of uh, pushing forward education. They fixed up the tutorials. I think the Super Rentals tutorial is uh, relevant, and most of all, it actually works. And so I have definitely have ran into a few blockers. I've had code snippets not work. Uh, the documentation, while I always try to go there as my first source, sometimes uh, it doesn't always work or make sense. And the Ember core team, they make a really good job of 
going through issues and really trying to help everyone out. And so getting started it was really easy with Ember and that definitely helped me along my way. Another part was being able to leverage a framework. It meant that I had this path where I could create an ambitious application without having to struggle every step of the way. And since it is a framework, that means that I was able to see a structured project, whereas before, I didn't even know how to organize my code or where my files went or what that should even look like. And Ember gave me this ability to learn something once, and they're pretty good about make, not making breaking changes. So that means I can keep learning incrementally, and the best practices come built in, so I'm able to learn good habits. And that also means I can avoid reinventing the wheel. Another part that really helped me with Ember is their tooling. And I think it's really important to be able to utilize that. My favorite, of course, being Ember CLI. It's a command line utility, and it helps create a conventional project structure. And this means, again, I spend less time configuring, and things are able just to work. And it really simplifies the process of just getting started. And it's as easy as that. And once I was able to get started, I was able to focus on something new, error tracking, because it's really valuable to know if your website isn't working as intended. And for me, my first experience with this was I shared my website with my mom, and her being a mom, sent it to all of her friends. <laughs> yeah, but she put in the wrong uh, route, and so I had this huge email list of all these people who went to my website and it wasn't working. And I had no idea that it happened until my grandma called to tell me so. <laughs> and so <laughs> it's definitely, I found out that error tracking, this process of capturing, uh, reporting and managing data was really necessary, even on something as small as my little website, to ensure that everything was working. And if it wasn't, that means I can catch it and correct it. So I started looking around, trying to figure out a way to implement this. And I stumbled upon Bug Snag. And I mostly chose it because there's an add-on for that. And Ember has a very rich uh, add-on ecosystem that makes it really easy to implement. And so from there, I started thinking, well, what else can I do? What else can I use Ember add-ons for? Because it's kind of fun to add them on. And so I stumbled upon a concept of, called analytics. And it's really useful to have because it tracks the use of an application and it helps validate that intended purpose. And when I first discovered analytics, it was actually through another project of mine. I create a newsletter for parents who really want their kids to have more, uh, more projects, more resources to keep coding outside of that hour of code that I teach them every week. And I use a, I use a platform. I'm not very good at styling, so it kind of makes it a little prettier, drag and drop. And what they do is kind of neat. I'm able to record and track every time someone opens a link or opens the email in general. And so I'm able to use that data and curate my newsletter to better fit the needs of all these parents. And I figured out that through Ember Metrics, I'm able to do that on my website as well. And so after I added on my add-ons and I had time to explore, I realized that when I initially started my website, I didn't actually deploy it in the Ember way. And so I think this is definitely the most critical process. Deployment is something I have a hard time finding in tutorials, especially for beginners. And I wanted to avoid this kind of situation where I'm spending a long time deploying and it's not very efficient. So I decided to implement the Ember way into my deployment process. Initially I was using S3 and AWS CLI and I was pushing manually. So that had a lot of repetition. It had the potential to be a little buggy if I did something wrong and it definitely wasn't scalable. And so the Ember way is with Ember CLI deploy. It provides a simple and flex flexible solution and it's really important to keep all versions of the application. Whereas before, I was just rewriting on top of the same one 
anytime I changed something. So if I broke it, I couldn't really roll it back. And so I really liked that Ember gave me a way to standardize my deployment pipeline. And with that, I had to host it. And I'm a student, so books are really expensive, and I definitely need to save money. So I decided to keep on utilizing AWS S3. It has this great pay-per-use model, and with Ember CLI, it, uh, my process is standardized. So the configuration does require a little familiarity with AWS, and once you're able to figure that out, it's actually very easy to set up and deploy, and within about five minutes, I had my app working the Ember way. And so at first I had to provide a pipeline for my Ember add-on, and then with the second, I uploaded uh, my index.html with revision info, which is important for if I need to roll something back. And then the third, it uploads all other assets. And so through this journey, I really found that my journey is never really truly going to be finished. There's always something new to try, something new to break and experiment with. But using a framework gave me the opportunity to learn in an incremental approach. I'm able to hit on sticky points, really learn my way through them, and keep building on top of each other. Instead of starting at the very bottom and then trying to implement something new without any foundation. And so my next step will be to implement Fastboot onto my website. I want to improve my initial load speed, and I want to keep learning about Ember. And so there's so much to learn and so much to do, and I'm really excited for this process. And so hope, I'm hoping that this talk will help others kind of learn that entire process from start to ship. And thank you, everybody. You can find me on Twitter, at Gabzilla, or check out my blog uh, that documented my entire process at www.gabzilla, same spelling, .com. Thank you. So you said I, I, I mentioned a couple different ways I try to approach learning and what was the most helpful for me. Um, for learning, learning in general for programming, I definitely tried, I tried out a bunch of tutorials and in school I took classes. And the problem with those is I didn't really get much context. We would be doing very small little projects and I wasn't seeing the whole picture. So actually starting my project, deciding okay, I'm going to build a website and I gave myself a deadline that I needed to have it finished for class, that was the best approach I had to learning. Because I kind of lit a fire and I had to work through everything to get it done. So the question was um, how learning the documentation was a really big benefit for me. And so at first when I started learning, I would look at a tutorial or something or try out uh, things with Ember and then I'd get stuck and I'd Google it and then I'd get lost down this rabbit hole of going through Stack Overflow and all these questions and there'd be a lot of things I didn't need or I didn't understand. And so when I finally started just using the documentation as my main source of information, that really helped me uh, work through a lot of the questions I had because most of the answers are there. So that's what really helped me. Awesome. Thank yeah, thank you.